So here's a random question for you. Who won the 2015 Nobel Peace Prize? Was it President Barack Obama? Was it President Calderon of Colombia? Or was the President Dmitry Mortov of Ukraine? The answer is none of the above. 2015 Nobel Peace Prize went to the Tunisian National Dialogue Quartet. But why did they win it? And what happened to Tunisian democracy ever since? To get a better understanding, let's look at the background. Tunisia is located in the Maghreb, in the northern part of Africa. It's surrounded by Algeria and Libya. It has a population of 11 million people. Much like many of its neighbors, Tunisia was formerly a French colony and it's impacted deeply by French political systems. And much like its neighbors, Tunisia has always been ruled by dictatorships. This is not a place where there's a lot of freedom and democracy. In fact, between 1987 and 2011, it was ruled by a dictator called Ben Ali. At least that was the case until 2011, when a street vendor named Muhammad Bazouzi set himself on fire to protest political corruption and lack of economic opportunity. This event set off street-wild protests that eventually led to what we know as the Jasmine Revolution, the revolution in Tunisia. This served as a first domino that would lead to the Arab Spring all across the Arab world. Fast forward to January 14th of 2011, when Ben Ali fled the country and ran away to Saudi Arabia. Tunisia was ready to start a new political system. And on October 23rd, that same year, Tunisia went to the poll with a 90% participation rate. Very impressive. The Muslim Brotherhood style and Hadda party wins the election and forms the first democratic coalition with two other political parties. Over the coming years, Tunisia would try to balance between its traditional values of political Islam and democratic forces. This would lead to a lot of instability in the nation's political system. In 2013, a group of civil society organizations known as the National Dialogue Quartet would broker a deal between the nation's two largest political parties leading to political settlement and a national unity government. And in 2014, Tunisia would enact a new constitution that would lead to separation of powers, an independent judiciary system, and many freedoms for its citizens. At this point, many people in the West recognize Tunisia as a model that showed that Arab democracies can actually work, and this led to the Nobel Peace Prize a year later. However, over the next couple of years, Tunisia would face a lot of conflict, certainty, corruption, and instability. Fast forward to 2019, when law professor Kais Saeed was voted into power by a majority of Tunisians. For the next couple of years, things looked okay until Saeed suspended the powers of parliament, suspended judiciary powers, and introduced a new referendum that would grant him almost dictatorship-like status for life. And as for the constitution that won the Nobel Peace Prize, that pretty much went out the door. So what can the Tunisian case study teach us about democracy in the Arab world and about the future of Tunisia as a whole? I remember in 2011, when the Arab Spring came out, everybody was talking about the future of democracy in the Middle East. A lot of Western pundits thought and argued that in a couple of years, nations like Tunisia would be similar to Denmark, France, and Italy. But it looked like they were wrong. The Arab Spring turned into an Arab winter, and what the promise of democracy was soon replaced by war, strife, and authoritarian government. What do you think of the future of Tunisia and why is it that the democracies are not flourishing in the Arab world? I would love for you to hear from you in the comments.